If you or any of your children are currently taking them, you'll need little schooling in this conversation. We're in the midst of the GCSE and A-level exam season, and for students and parents alike, you have both my sympathy and respect. Mum, Dad, go easy with them just this time. Keeping in the spirit of said exams, try this one. <clears throat> if a particular type of school, and that's grammar for those of you at the back of the class, appears beloved by parents and pupils, but derided as unfair, unduly selective and disastrous to those who fail to meet a set level of attainment, should it have been entitled to pick up 50 million quid from the taxpayer to fund expansion. Discuss. This is really interesting to me, Dick, Nick, because I, I, went to, uh, I went both to comprehensive school and to grammar school and have experienced both systems. In fact, the comprehensive school I went to um, was so bad, it was eventually put under special measures uh, and then taken over by new management. Um, is that because you were in it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, I think my presence had something to do with it. Yeah. Um, after my comprehensive school, I went to further education college, got expelled, and then on my mother's insistence, uh, taught my way into this grammar school, for which I didn't really have the grades, but the headmaster... You talked your way into yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, wow. I mean, it's, it's no surprise I ended yeah, up on no. this panel. <laughs> um, the headmaster, Mr Baker, liked me, took a liking to me and let me in. Right. And I can honestly say they were the best educational years of oh. my life and turned my life around. I wouldn't have got the A-level grades I got if not for those that two, two years in grammar school studying A-levels, and I probably wouldn't have ended up at university. One teacher in particular... I should say two, because it was one class in particular. My mm. economics A-level class had mm. two teachers. And they talent spotted me and actually predicted me an A for economics. I got the A, mm. and it was the first A I'd ever been predicted for an academic subject. What would have happened if you stayed in your comp, do you imagine? I, I, would have been, yeah, I, I, I mean, I definitely wouldn't have gone to university. I okay. think it was, so this economics teacher said, when he said to me, you're going to get an A, I was literally shocked. And I said, I, I, what happened was I didn't want to let him down. So I studied really hard mm. and got the A in economics that he predicted me. In fact, I got exactly what I was predicted. Uh, that teacher later went on to become the headmaster. He's now the headmaster of the same school. Oh, yeah. So I would, <clears throat> I've had this really interesting experience. I know a lot of people worry about whether middle-class parents um, have an advantage because they prepare their kids because they can afford private yeah. tuition. Yeah. Um, I failed the 11 plus. My parents couldn't afford private tuition. Yeah. Um, and I got in in this rather unorthodox way. So the only caveat I'd make is, <clears throat> as long as these grammar schools are catering for people that can't afford the private tuition and thereby can't afford to advantage their children in that way, mm. currently the stats are that 2.6% um, of kids in grammar schools are eligible for free school meals. Very little, I, As opposed yeah. to 13.4% yeah. in state schools. Yeah. If that gap can be redressed, then I would wholeheartedly back this. And I think that may require some form of special approach uh, to kids from more disadvantaged backgrounds. Okay. The grammar schools, currently, only a minority of them are considering this. But I, I think that Theresa May's proposals need to be caveated That's in that way. That's a very fair point. Yeah. I Bridget. think, agree with everything Majid said, and also, uh, 50 million is not... No, it's it's pretty much yeah. a drop in the ocean yeah. when you look at the edu entire education budget, which I won't go, because it will be another statistic. <laughs> um, what I heard Madge say, which is, really, it's not necessarily about whether you're a state or a grammar or a private or a comprehensive or a Catholic or a boarding or a faith school or whatever. It's about good teaching yeah. and, and finding... A, re a rapport with a good teacher. Can I name them? Is it not? Is yeah, it you not did. You said thing? Mr. Baker. No, the guy that gave predicted me a name, Mr. Oh, Moth, and you see, yeah, this and Mr. is Skelly. what it's about. Hats yeah. off so to those much two. more than yeah. the sort of school you're in. Is it not also about recognising talent and kids? I mean, yes, I've got a cycle good, proficiency. That's good right, and that was a, I took that twice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a teacher. Oh, mate, you've done well. You've excelled with me. But you know what I mean? But it, it, it's about recognising <laughs> talent and kids. Yeah. But you need to be an empathetic teacher who likes kids, yeah, who yeah, wants yeah. them to succeed, for that to happen. Yeah. Don't you? Let's get the grammar schools, come back to the, the point yeah. is really... I hear what yeah. you say about teachers, yeah. of course. Afwa. I find this topic tricky because I'm really passionate about anything that can improve the quality of education for of kids in state schools. And, you know, I'm a parent. We all want yeah. our child to go to school where they will have teachers that care about them, where they will be in classes where they get enough attention. The reality is that's not happening in so many state schools and it's really unfair. And I, I have never experienced grammar school. I hear another generation mm -hmm. talk about them mythically as this way that the state system gave kids that. And it sounds wonderful, but I have these concerns that they will be hijacked by middle-class parents. And at the moment, Majid mentioned the free school meal statistic. 
There's also the fact that, um, OK, so there's 163 grammar schools. I've got the stats today. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> there are 163 grammar schools um, educating 167,000 pupils, but they only take in 3.6% of pupils with special educational needs, oh. compared to 11% nationally. Well, they and must there maybe be forced to look at the lower-income groups I think, and the SEN groups. And, and the that's concern right. with grammar schools is always... it's amazing to create a really high quality education for kids who are gifted and able but what about everybody else no. do they get okay. dumped no. in i'm i'm all up for kids that are able being pushed forward but right. sport is a particular good example of this okay Man United don't care where they get their kids from. I could have played for England, but I was rubbish. So I never, do you know what I mean? I never got picked for these sporting academies and all that sort of stuff. Right. And a, a grammar school, I see it as an academy for people that can and will achieve eventually, OK? Yes. I don't believe the, scouting, door be, the, door, the door should be shut to anybody. Yeah. And I believe that even if the, you know, the person on the lowest income in the but, school, if they've got the noggin, they should get the knock on the door and they should back, go as well. I bring, before I bring Rachel back in, um, address Madge's point, which is... Probably I could, well, my children now pass it. I can afford to get special tuition. That's not necessarily fair on other people in my street no, who can't. There is always going to be. There is always a certain element of that is life to a certain extent. Yeah. But if a child excels in, an, in in a school and there's an opportunity to go somewhere yeah. as he's been talent spotted, yeah. okay, and go and do that, and they'll be recognised like by the exams academy. and the Sats and all yeah. the other stuff that he does. If he's recognised as doing well, snap him up, get him in. What about Rich. your story, Magid, yeah. though? Because Magid was clearly a, a, a clever, gifted kid, but it wasn't spotted at well, the level. Well, you gave me Mr. Clever in the midst of it. If you hadn't been able to talk the hind legs off a donkey, you never would have been able to get into it. Listen, Angela Rayner, MP, wants to your point up. Let's hear what she has to say. We know that grammar schools do not help all children get on in life and do well. They only help the privileged few. We want an education service in Labour that makes sure that every child has those opportunities. And it's really unfortunate at a time where we're having real term cuts to our schools that the government have chosen just to give a lifeline to those privileged few. Now, to your point, Phil, I think that's a really good analogy with sports, because actually, even in the comprehensive school I was in that was eventually put under special measures, as I said, they had a streaming system. So even in yes. the comp school, they streamline and they select the, the kids they, they yep. know are going to be able to pass to higher grades and put them in what they call the grammar stream in a comprehensive school. So I think the key thing here is making sure uh, that we are scouting for talent, whether it's in sports or in academics. It's about finding the talent mm. and promoting it. Rachel. Well, I mean, we heard from Angela Rayner. We must hear now from Damien Hines, who's the Education Secretary. It's not just... A, it's about actual... They both seem to agree that we mm. need more good schools and yeah. more available, availability of places at good schools. Let's hear what he says. We need more, more good school places, and those can be in new voluntary aided schools, it could, be, it could be in one of the new wave of uh, free schools, but also it should be possible for selective schools to expand as it is possible for those others. It's about where the parental demand is, where the need is, and to make sure there is an excellent education available nearby. You see, as somebody who benefited from really the best education money can buy, I am not going to sit here and say that you shouldn't expand grammar mm. schools to okay. enable others less fortunate and privileged than I was to benefit from a good education. Did your get the money back when they asked, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> right, you've talked about your level of education, there as no have you. It's time sadly. to play the pledge, <laughs> top of the form. So who can identify? <laughs> this grammar school boy went on to study business at LSE, but Mick dropped Jagger. out... Mick Jagger is absolutely oh, right. That was quick. That was she, this good. next one, it was head girl of her grammar school where the motto was... Theresa May. Wrong. Thatcher. Right. Oh, <laughs> Margaret Thatcher is yeah. Stephen and Grantham yeah. Girls School. Okay. This grammar school boy studied natural sciences at Cambridge University and is now a television broadcasting legend. Pleasures? Attenborough. I was going to say, it looks like Boris Johnson. Shall it's it? not <laughs> Boris Johnson. It is Sir David Attenborough. You're absolutely right. Wigaston Grammar School in Leicester. And we close with this grammar school girl was the first black woman to be elected Diana. to that... It's got to be Abbott, isn't it? It's got to be Abbott. <laughs> Absolutely right. Can we I'll do a test you... on a bicycle? I'll, I'll, give you... A+. <laughs> I'll give you A+. I'll give you A+. A+.